good day. Today's gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. And if you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible, that's page 83 in the New Testament. Luke, chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. One day, as he was teaching the people in the temple and telling the good news, the chief priests and the scribes came with the elders and said to him, Tell us, by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it who gave you this authority? He answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The word of the Lord. I did not get a chance to thank the Monsoon Brass for being with us today. They always do such a wonderful job. And our Trinity Bell Ringers as well. They do a wonderful job also. And they work very, very hard. We are so glad to have them with us. When someone asks you a yes or no question, how do you answer? At the baptism that we're going to have, we're going to ask questions of the parent. And it's simple questions. And they're going to answer, I do. Which is just another way, as you know, of saying yes. You will be asked to answer the question as well. And you'll also be asked to say, I do. And if you think about it, almost all of the questions we are asked every day, seeking a yes or no answer, are easy for us to say. Although sometimes we may want to add a few words of explanation when we give a yes or a no. But an answer of yes and no, or no, and I think you'll agree with me on this, is much more difficult to obtain in the halls of government. If you watch the spectacle of investigations, trials, or interviews in Washington, D.C., and I think in other state capitals, we rarely hear a straight yes or no answer especially when it comes to controversial issues. Often, a questioner in a Senate or House hearing, the questioner will demand, give me a yes, give me a no, that's all I want to hear. But the witness just keeps on going on a long, rambling, or deflective response. That's no slam upon the witness. Some things just can't be answered simply with a yes or a no, but we will certainly hear the demand for that, won't we? Why is there such a difference in answering yes or no to a question in our everyday lives as compared to something like the United States Congress? Well, you know the answer. Politics. Politics, of course. And politics is the dynamic in this story from the Gospel of Luke, a story in which the event preceding that time of questioning uh, no, I'm sorry, the event preceding what happens in Luke provokes the question, provokes the question. This story from Luke 20 takes place right after Jesus cleanses the temple in Jerusalem. Now, that was a shocking act taking place, as you'll recall, where the merchants, the business people, were selling sacrificial objects and animals at, for sacrifice at highly inflated prices. Because at the temple, they had a captive audience. If you did not bring the sacrifice with you, you had to buy it right there, and it was not cheap. The prices were inflated. The temple was sacred space for Israel's religion. 
But for the leaders of the temple and the city, the high priest, the scribes, and the elders, the temple was also a place of business and politics. When Jesus overturned the tables in that sacred space, he overturned the lives of the gatekeepers of the temple. Those gatekeepers were not happy about Jesus' action, so they confronted him publicly in front of the same crowds who had witnessed Jesus cleansing the temple, sanctifying the temple precincts by turning all those tables over and driving the money changers out. One day, as he was teaching the people in the temple and telling the good news, the good news of the kingdom of God, the chief priest and the scribes came with the elders and said to him, tell us, as Will just read, tell us, by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it who gave you this authority? Their questioning to Jesus could have been one of two things. It was either a demand for Jesus to defend his spiritual authority to teach and to act as he had done the day before, or it was a demand for Jesus to identify his political authority to teach and do these things over Israel, such as declaring himself the king of Israel. You'll recall that many people were not just declaring him the Messiah. Others were saying, this is King David returned. This is the king for whom we've been waiting. And don't you think the leaders did not hear that? They did. The intention of the question was not to gain information, but to corner Jesus so that in any answer he gave, the leaders could arouse a violent response from the crowd or do things that would result in charges for which they could arrest him. That's what they were waiting for. They had him in a box. They had him in a box. They could bring charges against him, which eventually they would, or they could just stir up the crowd to do it. That's what their plan was. It was a plan, right? But in his response to his challengers, Jesus put them in the same box in which they were trying to trap Jesus. He answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me, did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They discussed it with one another, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, well, why did you not believe John? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us. What the leaders were hoping for was to stir up the crowd enough that they would stone Jesus for being a false messiah, for being a blasphemer. But Jesus throws it back on them. One thing which trapped the leaders in that setting was the politics of their status in Israel. Whether sovereigns, dictators, or representatives, doesn't matter which one they are, Political leaders can only stay in power by one of two ways, either brutal oppression or popular assent. Jesus, who had turned over the tables in the forecourt of the temple, literally turned the table on his questioners. These men used the dialectic method to teach others. Now, what was the dialectic method? It was a process of one question followed by a responsive question with another question in response and back and forth until the truth was finally reached. It was a, a Hellenistic, a Greek-influenced process of teaching, and it was used throughout that whole culture, the dialectic method. And Jesus used this method 
when he replied to the leader's question with his own question. But of course we know the leaders were not there that day to teach or to learn. That, they had no interest in that whatsoever. They did not want to share the dialectical process with Jesus. They were there to publicly humiliate, arrest, or destroy him. When they realized that Jesus had placed their political and economic power in jeopardy with a single question, guess what they did? They bailed. They bailed completely on their scheme. So they answered that they did not know where John's baptism came from. The religious and political leaders in Jerusalem were always supposed to have the answers to the people's questions about either the will of God or the law. They were the ones who were supposed to know. But Jesus knew his detractors cared only for their own power and wealth rather than God or the law and especially not the people whose lives they were supposed to shepherd. Jesus' public question to those leaders were not the worth of a political revolutionary, a religious blasphemer, or a madman, but the Messiah, the one for whom the people had long awaited. C.S. Lewis, in his book, mere Christianity, explains that 2,000 years later and says that we are faced with the same decision about Jesus as the leaders were that day in front of the crowd. This is what he wrote, quote, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else he's a madman or something worse. He has not left that open to us, and Jesus did not intend to. Once the leaders drop their faults efforts to engage Jesus in a dialectic process, Jesus mirrored their own response, their own unwillingness to answer the question with his own. Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Now, why did Jesus not give them the answer that, they were, that he was the promised Messiah? which he had been, others had been saying about him. Why didn't he tell them that? Because the leaders were not looking for an answer. They did not care about getting an answer. The leaders were not questioning Jesus out of some deep spiritual search for the truth or the search for faith, but only out of their own selfish motives. They were in defensive, protective mode. The question the leaders asked of Jesus is still being asked of him today from the same type of very self-centered motive. Tell us who you are, Jesus. What is your answer? Prove to us who you are. I will believe in you if you will just prove to me who you are. Do what I ask you to do. That, you'll hear that every day. But Jesus' only answers to that question is given to those who are seeking him. If you're looking for him, he'll answer that question for you. That is what C.S. Lewis did, and Christ answered him with love and with the gift of faith. But he was looking for that. He was looking. He wanted to know. So are we asking the right question of Jesus this morning? 
any question that we ask of the Lord today will result in his question to us. What is your answer? It is the same question Jesus asked of his disciples when he said, a lot of people are saying a lot of things about me. And they told him what they were saying. But who do you say that I am? And you'll remember who answered. It was Peter who answered. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter had answered the question correctly. And there was nothing more to say. And that answer is not about politics or wealth or religion or anything else. It is about what we tell the world about Jesus with our hearts, our mouths, and our hands. Every day, Jesus asks you and I that same question. Who do you say that I am? And then he gives us countless opportunities to provide the answer. As we're given opportunities every day to love others, to seek forgiveness, to grant forgiveness, to feed people who are hungry, to care for those around us, to love them, to shepherd them, to be the body of Christ. Who do you say that I am? What is your answer? We're not just to say it. We're to live it. Let's do so. Amen. Now we will sing our hymn of the word, which you will see on the screen.